This issue has been discussed by scholars for a long time. Did the pharaohs reach America? Did the pharaohs reach the moon? Or did they come from the moon? The Norwegian sailor Thor Heyerdahl arrived in America in his small boat, Ra Tu. He thus proved that it was possible for the pharaohs to reach America with a ship made of papyrus before Columbus discovered it in the year 1492, that is, thousands of years before him. Either the pharaohs arrived by sea, or they arrived by land, that is, when there was the sunk continent of Atlantis, which occupied the place occupied by the Atlantic Ocean. The pharaohs were the first to announce to the world the sinking of the continent of Atlantis, and that its people were dispersed across all continents, and that most of them came to Egypt as kings and gods, and that some of them also returned to heaven, that is, to other planets suitable for life. This means that the relationship has now become close between pharaonic Egypt and the Inca's civilization in Mexico, Peru, and Bolivia, or between the pyramids of Egypt and the pyramids of Mexico. And in the year 1947, the sailor Thor Heyerdahl proved something like this. He discovered that the Peruvians in South America had also immigrated. From the west to the islands of the Pacific Ocean, on March 28, 1947, Thor Heyerdahl and six others made a trip from the port of Calao in Peru in his boat known as Contiki. He traveled 4,000 miles on this boat, made of light balsa wood, equipped with two cloth sails and some radio equipment. In 105 days, he reached an island east of the Tahiti Islands. As for Heyerdahl's theory, it is that he noticed that the islands of the Pacific Ocean are inhabited by people with white skin, golden hair, and blue eyes, and they cannot be of Indian origin. Therefore, perhaps they immigrated from America, and Heyerdahl lived on one of the islands for a year, and knew that there were legends that spoke of the god Tiki, and that this Tiki was their father who came from the West. He is tall, white, with blonde hair and blue eyes. When Heyerdahl went to Peru, he found that there was a statue of the god Tiki among the forests. He learned from the people of Peru that a very ancient battle had taken place between their white ancestors and the Indians, after which the whites fled to the west. Heyerdahl confirmed that they escaped in boats made of light balsa wood. He made the same canoe from wood that he brought from Ecuador. He rowed with other sailors from Norway. On an arduous and successful journey, he proved that Tiki had come from Peru, and that the people of these islands in the Pacific Ocean were descendants of Tiki, the son of the sun. There is an archaeological theory that says that the pharaohs also reached these islands through Central Africa, and thus the pharaohs traveled around the world from both sides. The news was that Russian and American astronauts had taken pictures on the surface of the moon of pharaonic obelisks. Eight pharaonic-shaped obelisks. This means that the pharaohs were above and descended, or they were below and rose, or that those who erected the obelisks and pyramids were people who were on the moon, or they were on the earth and headed for the moon. Then they left the moon for other planets suitable for life. They came here or went there, for reasons we do not know now, but their traces indicate that they were here. Or were they there, and what we don't know now is why they came. Why did they disappear? They are the secrets of this wondrous universe, and the secrets of these rational or very rational beings that travel the vast expanses of space using very advanced scientific means. We only know their images on the temples and their effects on the stones. It must be very advanced because its journeys are long and its load is heavy. But a major astronomical catastrophe toppled it, and only some of its effects or echoes remain in the history of peoples, their religions, myths, and rare documents. If you go to the Hawaiian Islands, you will find that the people of Hawaii have a legend that is considered one of the most wonderful and eloquent things known to man. In front of them, a person has no choice but to stand in amazement. Where did they come from? How did they come? Legend says, Water was the first of everything. From the water came all living creatures, fish, birds, reptiles, beasts, women, men, and gods. As for the trees, they were toppled by the clouds. The clouds were in the shape of birds, and in the beak of each plane was a seed. This legend is thousands of years old. Perhaps it was 3,000 years old. That is, exactly when Venus became a planet with a fixed orbit in the solar system. And with Venus entering our solar system, many eloquent beings, heroics, and legends descended to Earth. And at a time, one. 
This Hawaiian myth has indicated something important, which is where the trees on earth came from. Where did the seeds come from to the land of Armenia, where Noah's Ark landed? There is no chemical or biological method known now that is capable of creating a seed on any plant. Birds bringing seeds from the clouds indicate that these seeds came to this earth from other planets. The legend says that goblins, jinn, or spirits are not more powerful than humans and that a ghost can kill a human. But a person with an atomic bomb can kill hundreds of thousands or all of humanity.